Hello and welcome to this presentation entitled Towards a Culture of Academic Integrity at Sligo Institute of Technology. My name is Nick Broom and I work in the implementation team at Epigeum, a part of Oxford University Press, and I have responsibility for helping customer institutions to make the most of their Epigeum courses. A good deal of my work is with Irish institutions and today I'm delighted to be co-presenting with Gavin Clinch and Jennifer Gilligan from Sligo Institute of Technology. I will introduce them more fully in a moment. As you can see from the agenda, which is just coming up, I'll be starting the session off with a short introduction to Epigeum and also saying a few words on how we've been working in Ireland. This will be followed by a quick overview of our academic integrity program, which features strongly in IT Sligo's approach to the topic. IT Sligo was part of our highly successful development group process, which I'll mention in more detail shortly. After this, I'll hand over to Gavin and Jennifer to share how IT Sligo is working towards introducing a culture of academic integrity within the Institute. We plan to leave a good amount of time at the end for any questions that you might have. Please put them into the question box on your screen. Thank you. I'm very pleased to introduce my co-presenters from IT Sligo, Gavin Clinch and Jennifer Gilligan. Gavin is the head of online learning there and the main driver for the Institute's ongoing relationship with Epigene, while Jennifer is an instructional designer who's done a fantastic job in customizing the programs to the needs of the Institute. Epigeum was founded as a spin-out from Imperial College London in 2005, responding to the need for online support in key areas, most notably at the time, research and training. After 10 years, the company was acquired by Oxford University Press in May 2015, and we have continued to add new strands to our portfolio. So now we offer courses in research, teaching and development, studying, and most recently, support and well-being. So far, 13 institutions in Ireland have helped us to create our programmes via the development group process, and some of them have been contributors more than once. Every Irish Universities Association and Technological Higher Education Association member currently uses Epigeum programmes, many with multiple programmes. Our collaboration with the IUA and THEA began in January 2018, and we've been delivering research integrity training, including bespoke Irish versions of modules, to the National Forum for Research Integrity since then. We provide full technical and implementation support, including two user group meetings per year, in which member institutions share their experiences and best practice. I'd just like to give you a very brief introduction to our academic integrity program. Um, I'm sad to say that this section begins with a, uh, a very sad note. Um, as you may have heard about Professor Tracy Bretag's recent passing, Tracy effectively wrote the key work on academic integrity. And we're proud to say that she was a wonderful lead advisor on our project. Tracy always advocated a positive approach towards academic integrity, rather than focusing on punishment when something goes wrong. She was joined uh, by other experts, amongst whom Dr. Thomas Lancaster, who's speaking, as you may know, during this Academic Integrity Week. We were also collaborating with our development group members who have a major role in ensuring that the content of the course is as suitable as possible for their requirements. As I mentioned earlier, IT Sligo was a member of the development group for the Academic Integrity Programme, but also for our blended learning and academic success courses. Um, for the AI programme, we were also joined by uh, TU Dublin Blanchestown campus. Um, amongst other contributors that you can see there um, on the Academic Integrity course project. So how does the development group process actually work? Well, we invite 
institutions from all over the world to, co to contribute their expertise to the creation of a program and, and in return they receive this edition of the course in perpetuity. In non-COVID times we run a two-day workshop usually in London. Uh, the AI one actually took place in Oxford as it happens and currently any that we hold will be remote. During the workshop the development group members work alongside our export expert authors and epigm staff and run through the draft content screen by screen making suggested improvements and then sharing that with the wider group a consensus is reached and then the authors go and write that content this is followed by a collaborative alpha review stage further changes are made interactive activities and animations created and video content filmed at member institutions so going to the structure of the program, uh, the, the resulting structure can be seen here. We have two courses, one for staff and one for students. The latter core content takes about two and a half hours to complete, while the staff training lasts about three hours. Although the training is very complete, it's been designed into small chunks of no more than about 30 or 35 minutes, so allowing for easier engagement and also the ability to dip in and dip out. There's also a wealth of additional optional content. The main, as you can see, the main target audience is undergraduate and both teaching and non-teaching staff. Uh, the modules in each, as you can, you can see there, um, so these are the modules for both the staff and student facing programs. Uh, with the content obviously adapted to the relevant user. So I'll just um, give you a second to look at that. <clears throat> Thank you. And just uh, just to show you a couple of screenshots from the program. Um, so here is a sample screen from the student facing course. You'll notice the use of animations and then going on to the staff course screenshot um, as you say sort of pink red for the um, student one and green for the staff facing the dominant cover color um, so that is just an example um, of that so I would now like to ask Gavin and Jennifer to share their experiences academic integrity at IT Sligo. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nick. Thanks for that uh, that overview. Um, just uh, and thanks, uh, Maddie, for the for the first slide. So I, ju I just want to talk a little bit about um, academic integrity and 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 the culture and what we're talking about in terms of driving that that culture and developing a culture across the institute and the, and the challenges that that uh, that are there. So there's a lot of work that's happening uh, in the last in the last year, really, with the National Academic Integrity Network in, in Ireland. That um, I've recently joined along with uh, Nick Plunk, another colleague in, in IT Sligo. Uh, but we've been very conscious of the of the need for academic integrity within the institute and, and to drive that forward. Uh, and I particularly like this 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 line that, that that academic integrity is central to the culture of a higher education institute. Um, and I think as we, as we go through this um, this discussion today, it's, it, it is uh, obvious that all stakeholders are, are responsible uh, and to have ownership of, uh, of academic integrity. Um, so on my next slide, um, we I suppose we started this process in terms of engaging with 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 Epigeum because we had prior experience on on. Uh, blended learning and academic success um, courses so we knew that we knew really how the whole process worked and we knew that the quality of the of the outputs is, is very good so we we, uh, we 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 spoke to epigeum I, I took this to our learning teaching assessment committee they supported it it went on to academic council full support there and then we were involved in that development group that nick mentioned and through the alpha and, and beta testing uh, and then we launched back in, in January of this year, we launched an academic integrity workshop, which was moderated by, by Jennifer. 
um, for staff. So our focus really was on, on, on the staff uh, initially, and we thought that if we can get the lecturers to engage with this, that they would then in turn promote the, the student-facing courses to, to the students. And we had an invited speaker, Dr. Fiona Reardon uh, from DCU, who attended, and she talked about their experience in, in DCU and, and the work they'd done in the previous year and on the integrity, um, the EU-funded integrity work that was going on. Um, and then on my next slide, so just really a definition of integrity. This has come from the uh, European Network on Academic Integrity, uh, which is, I think, being adopted by our own um, our own um, network. Compliance with ethical and professional principles, standards, practices, and a consistent system of values that serves as guidance for making decisions and taking actions in education, research, and scholarship. So, very comprehensive definition of of academic integrity. And I also put in the one there from the International Center for Academic Integrity, which goes back 20 years now, uh, which defines integrity as a commitment, even in the face of adversity, to five fundamental values, honesty, trust, fairness, respect and responsibility. And I think that, you know, we talk about the face of adversity um, and we're in a pandemic and that's something that I want to, to touch on later on. My next slide um, then, um, and this is something perhaps the and I think we're, when where the National Academic Integrity Network is really making an impact because it's looking at the the vocabulary. What is the lexicon? What is the language around academic integrity? We've got a definition for it. Um, and this, I think, you know, prevention, detection, and sanction. There's uh, and Nick touched upon this in, in reference to Tracy Bretag. There's probably too much focus at times on detection and, and sanction. Um, and the prevention piece is huge. So this is around communication to, um, to all stakeholders, not just the students, so that everybody is aware what is um, academic misconduct, what does cheating consist of, uh, because the, these lines can be, or these areas can be quite grey at times. Um, now, my next slide, please. So I met, again, I mentioned the QQI um, network. Uh, one of the functions is to offer guidance on the identification of strategies for higher education institutes. Uh, and again, it's talking about embedding a positive culture of, of academic in integrity. Uh, and culture is something that I'm, that I'm going to come on to now. Um, because we can have our strategies, we can have our, um, learning teaching assessment strategies, our institutional um, strategies. but culture is really what's going to to make this happen it's it's easy to write these things into uh, into strategies and one of these uh well, one of the, the strategies in terms of promoting a culture of academic integrity is is provide guidance in education for stakeholders so this brings us back to the to the academic academic integrity courses from from epigeum um very strong in both staff and student facing so not all the stakeholders but it, um, it's it's really capturing the the the, the teaching staff and, and the students. And, and then other strategies there in terms of mentoring learners around conduct in research, uh, institutional support for research ethics, um, and curriculum and assessment de design and development. Again, that's something that I'm going to come on to uh, towards the end of this presentation. Uh, the next slide, please, um, Maddie. So this slide then, where does culture reside? Uh, and I have this quote here from um, from Shine, and I think this is re really captures what what we're talking about when we talk about a culture. So a culture is is a prop is a property of a group, um, and it can begin to form within that group. So if we uh, that sentence I've highlighted there it exists at the level of the whole organisation if there is sufficient shared history. Uh, but that's what we're trying to get to, that, that culture across the Institute uh, at IT Sligo. But it may start within a group, within, a, within an academic team, within a program team, it might grow to a department. Uh, it should be growing in all areas, uh, but that's, this is the, I think the culture which is so different from, from, from a strategy, it's that everybody buys into it, everybody understands it, and everybody believes that this is, this is for the benefit of, of of learning and for the students. Um, and my next slide then, please. 
so again, an academic integrity policy, we are developing one uh, at IT Sligo. We have a plagiarism policy. And we're developing one under the Learning Teaching Assessment Committee. Um, but the, the, the TQSA, which is the Australian um, Quality Assurance Association, similar to, to our QQI, um, they have highlighted what uh, they see as being um, an exemplary academic integrity policy with these five key elements of access, approach, responsibility, detail and support. Uh, but it really stresses, this library stresses that need to, uh, to effectively implement uh, that, that policy, which, and that then requires a, a regular review, uh, identifying and resourcing academic integrity champions, which is something that we want to come out of this uh, development and through the, through the, uh, the workshop that, that we ran and further workshops that we will have with staff. Um, the academic integrity for all stakeholders, as I mentioned just uh, recently, not just um, teaching staff and students, but uh, at other professional management support services staff, and even the wider stakeholders, which would, which would include parents, um, employers, and society. Engaging students, again, I really think through uh, not just the, 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 the policies um, and the information around uh, academic integrity, but also through uh, through assessment, through engaging um, uh, assessment. And I, the, the the fraud triangle, which I included in there, this is Donald Cress's um, fraud triangle, and I think this is something that we're all very conscious of, particularly with SA mills. So the, there's the opportunity, there's the pressure, and then there's the rationalisation that uh, that a student will go through. Um, to to sort of explain why to themselves and to rationalise themselves why they might they might cheat. So that opportunity is something that is increasing, particularly with with SA mills. It's becoming easier to 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 access things like that. And if there's pressure, which can come through um, poor timetabling of uh, of assignments and assessments of, of students, um, and perhaps other external factors such as um, caring for family members or um, pressures of balancing life and study as well. A lot of our, our students are part-time online students. Uh, next slide then, please. So this brings me on really from, from the academic integrity to assessment in integrity and the principles of honest and trustworthy uh, assessment. And I think I wanted to really just look at this through the lens of the, of the current pandemic. Um, which has brought around a focus on online and, and e-assessment and other forms of, of assessment. assessment. Um, you know, I think that when we move to sort of remote uh, emergency, remote teaching, and we were, that happened in the middle of March and we were closing in on the end of semester two this year, uh, the last academic year, and academic staff are then looking to um, to move their assessments to an online format because we couldn't have exams in an exam hall, then the, the issue arises of what, what assessment will they give? Can we give an alternative assessment? Is it just the same same exam? Which can then um, lead to potential for cheating and going back to that triangle, the, the pressure uh, to, to do so. Uh, so the next slide then, please. So this is the, the, the culture of assessment and academic, is this the culture and academic uh, integrity that, that we want, which is um, where an institute is using, and we, we, we do have uh, online exams, and this, this use of technology, face recognition, voice recognition, keyboard rhythm, writing style analysis, anti-plagiarism tools. Uh, and this is, online exams have been running for a while. There are a number of providers, um, particularly in, in, in the US, uh, but there is a lot of uh, objection to, to, to this amount of uh, surveillance on, on, on a student um, and the authentication of a student. So perhaps rather than authenticating student identity, we, we, we need to focus on the authentication of the assessment itself. Um, and on the next slide, so re really the... the uh, 
are we the question is are we heading towards a, a technological arms race where the surveillance is is increased the technology that we use as an institute um, to to uh, monitor our students taking exams is going to be uh, counter counteracted by uh, the technology that is becoming available to students and that goes beyond uh, SA, SA mills to the sort of wearable technologies that that are available and becoming available all the time and the students can have uh, access to. So again, is this the kind of climate that we want to, to, to work in? Is this the, the culture of, uh, of academic integrity or the culture of assessment that, that we really want as an institute and as a, and as a sector? Uh, next slide then, please. So authentic assessment, um, just highlighting those those problems that researchers uh, has stated that exist with with tests and quizzes that they typically assess low level learning, uh, not always aligned with learning outcomes, and that their overuse can promote uh, cheating, which again is is, is that uh, that fraud triangle. Uh, looking at the research and surveys conducted by Dr. Donald McCabe at the International Centre for Academic Integrity, it was over a 12 year period. Uh, that their surveys found that 68% of undergraduates and 43% of graduates admitted to some form of cheating, whether that was in written uh, assignments or in, in tests. Um, looking at the work of Raina Paloff and, and Keith Pratt, who, who wrote uh, lessons from the virtual classrooms, uh, they talk about online proctoring systems replicating a, a practice that isn't even effective in, in person, which again is this this argument that exams are typically only assessing low level learning and not the, the higher orders of Bloom's taxonomy. So online proctoring systems replicate that, that practice and exams they argue are only good for a few things which is managing faculty workload and assessing low level skills. Uh, they're not good at demonstrating student learning or mastery of a, of a topic. And my next slide please. So alternatives uh, for learner-centered collaborative assessments will be really, uh, it, it's about uh, students embedding their own personal experiences in their assignments. So it's very, very personalized. So writing assignments, uh, collaborative assignments, case studies, projects and, and debates. Harder to assess, but um, far more authentic um, and really, much harder to uh, to to cheat in. And then my final slide is um, program focus assessment. This is some work that was carried out um, a few years ago now um, through Bradford University, and it moves away from this um, module assessment where typically the the the, the students atomizes the, uh, the the learning and they segregate that that learning so it's only applied to to the module and once they pass that module uh, they they don't always then bring that learning to to another um, to another module or to the next year or to another project um, so in this in, in this chart where we've got different varieties of program focused assessment from from low to high in, in terms of the extent to which they cover the the learning of the program and then across the bottom the weighting of that assessment so the higher the weighting and the higher the, the, the extent to which it covers the assessment, we move up towards uh, personal evidence. My background, I was an architect. I, I studied architecture and I taught architecture in, in IT Sligo for, for many years. And the, that, that model, that kind of capstone project of a final project, um, which is uh, evidence through a portfolio of drawings and models and a presentation from, from the student really uh, captures all of the learning across the different modules. They were high stakes because over 50% of the marks for the, for the year were given to, to this project, um, which was then supported by, by other modules around um, design theory and technology and communication skills but everything was brought into into the into the final project and the panel of of, of reviewers who were then uh, talk to the talk to the student and ask them about their, their project and i think this is a model that can be applied to to many programs um, 
I know it's something that's always been in, in architecture and, and colleagues will say to me, well, it doesn't, it wouldn't work with ours. But I think integrating um, learning across a number of modules into an assessment, into some form of, a, of, a, of an assignment is, again, it just moves us away from, from that uh, fraud triangle where, the, where um, the, the, the pressure might be there, but the, the opportunity to, 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 to find a way of cheating is, is gone. So as well, just to finish off then, I think that the, um, we've, we've started in, in this move towards developing a, a culture of academic integrity at IT Sligo. The, the courses from Epigeum for staff and students are part of this process, um, but we do have a lot more to do because it's, it's, it's not a quick fix in terms of developing this culture. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gavin. Um, I'm going to talk to you now about how we integrated and customised um, our Epigeum uh, material um, into our learning interface and how we brought the ideas that Gavin has discussed um, our our values and our understanding of how to build a culture of academic integrity and how to use the resources that we had to do that. So next slide, please. So our focus really for our academic integrity content branched out into five main areas. We wanted to provide multiple navigation links into the content. So we wanted to make sure that students and staff were very aware of the content and it was easy to access from the website into our uh, virtual learning environment, Moodle, um, and even within Moodle that we had crossovers of uh, navigation paths into our academic integrity content. It was important for us to give students control over their own learning. So this took the form of giving students progress bars uh, within the content, uh, tick box uh, activation within um, some of the quizzes and activities so that they could uh, visually see uh, progress and that they could take the content in manageable chunks and overall see how their progression was during the year because we had the content open or we have the content open all year round so given that there are time pressures once they start into their courses of study we want to give them opportunities to pick up um, the academic integrity content when they have time uh, drop it again to do something else and come back in and out so to see their progress was really important um, also we wanted to customize the content so we wanted to, to become um, familiar to students through imagery from IT Sligo, um, any sort of context, so policies that we will develop, we will integrate, and any information that we already had, um, we integrated as much as we could once we got the content into our VLE. And it was very important to include staff in the whole process. So we uh, ran workshops, as Gavin has mentioned, um, but we also wanted uh, staff to become part of the integration of the content. So through one-to-one uh, -one discussions with individual lecturers, we were able to integrate some of the, um, a link from our um, content uh, into their modules in Moodle. And it was also really important that um, we have opportunities for feedback so that we can continuously improve and develop the material that we have. Next slide, please. So in terms of multiple navigation, I've already sort of explained this, but specifically, we wanted a dedicated location on the website. So the first point of call for any information that students receive um, in September during induction is they navigate to the website and we wanted it to have a valuable place there. So a dedicated web page with information and linking straight into our VLE Moodle. 
So once students are, are a fully registered student at IT Sligo, they have access into Moodle. So by providing a website link, we captured all students, even prior to formal registration. They were very aware of the co content of the course and the opportunity they had to take part. Um, we have a dedicated Moodle page. So all our content is in Moodle and it's housed in our BLE so that we could provide these extra navigational links and crossovers, um, especially during um, this time when all our material is now within the BLE and lecturers are using the BLE to teach. Um, we wanted to make that crossover seamless. So we're able to do that now that um, there's huge opportunities with everybody using some part of Moodle um, to teach or learn. So we have a dedicated support, my supports tab within Moodle, and this is on the dashboard. So once a student logs in, they can click on the my supports tab and every single support that we provide at IT Sligo is housed there, including the academic integrity course. So it became more emphasised as a support by placing it there. Um, we wanted to point content from other student supports. So now we have this crossover where we have other supports for all our students and we can point to the academic integrity content. Um, we wanted to create a big focus at induction as well um, because that's our opportunity to meet first years um, to give them a sense of what IT Sligo is all about. And it is important that at that stage, we do give them links to the academic integrity content and tell them about it. So we, we used an opportunity there. Um, on, we had a week long induction and on the Thursday, we had our registrar discuss academic integrity, exams, procedures, and we also linked into some content. Um, and it was also important that not only were we pointing continuously to the content, but we gave incentives for completion. So here we have a graphic of all of the elements I've just described, our website, uh, dedicated page, the My Supports tabs, uh, where we were pointing to supports within other supports, um, and the induction schedule which became um, a live schedule where they could click on elements and be pulled into Moodle. So it not only uh, described activities for the week, it became interactive in that they were live linked to um, either a video or into uh, a course in Moodle. Next slide, please, Maddie. So our second focus uh, was all about giving students control over their own learning. And this took the shape of the Epigeum content being self-paced. So uh, students could, as I mentioned before, pick up and drop off as they had time. And specifically within the week-long induction, we gave them some opportunities to participate in other self-paced uh, supports. So we continue to use uh, um, this um, type of self-paced uh, element to the academic integrity content. So we needed a place to share knowledge and ask questions. And this was a great way of doing it because we now have a dedicated Moodle page and we set up a forum. So students are not only there to uh, read content and um, uh, uh, complete quizzes and build on their knowledge, they can also uh, use it as a social space. So any experiences they have, uh, any um, discussions that they want to bring up with other students, there's opportunities now within that uh, content to do that. And um, the progress bar is a feature in Moodle that we used to monitor progress and students can visually see their own progress on the progress bar. We gave them knowledge of badging because we wanted to incentivize the content. So a digital badge is released once they complete all the content. And we also used activity completion tick boxes so that as they complete material, they see a little tick appearing and it's just another little visual cue. And um, there's uh, more motivation 
uh, if once you see your own progress appearing as you complete. And also, we were able to provide a personalised interface. So once students log in, our academic integrity content uh, displays their individual progress. So to 100%, uh, from zero to 100%, they, they can see on the dashboard how they're doing in terms of their own progress. Um, but another incentive that we devised was um, in conjunction with lecturing staff is a percentage towards another module of study. So if they're studying on another module, uh, the lecturer may have approached us and asked, you know, can we integrate it into the module and we'll give a percentage towards this. So it, it provided further emphasis. So I'll just go on to my next slide now and I'll show you a visual of all of these control elements. So here we see the progress bar. Uh, you see it's all red at the moment, but as someone completes it, it turns green. The digital badge appears within Moodle as well. So once it's awarded, it's, a, it's another key visual and they're displaying their dashboard there in the left hand corner. So the main interface is laid out in manageable chunks. So we took the epigeum content and themed it into three themes that were uh, um, condensed into one hour chunks. So each one takes approximately one hour and visually they can see that they can dip in and out of each one and complete as they have time. So I'll just move on to the next slide now. And our next focus was customizing the content. So as you can see, we had opportunities to add in pages into the score and packages that Epigeum provided. So not only were we using um, the material that was developed to, through the development, development group, we were able to customize some imagery and insert that and in any uh, particular messages that are welcome messages, for example, or any closing statements or even hyperlinks to any uh, policies or um, any material that we had in other areas, we could link in there through our own customization. I'll just move on to the next slide. So another focus of ours was to include staff and integrate the content that we had into their module. So this came in the form of raising awareness, firstly, in January, as Gavin had mentioned, with workshops. So this generated ideas with staff and it also allowed for discussion and any concerns that staff had. And this was really important to us. So if we were developing material, um, we needed to know what staff um, wanted to raise, what, what concerns they had and any ideas that they had. So that we were working with staff um, to customize the material and make sure that they were also happy to use it and they had an understanding um, if they were going to discuss it with their students or integrate it into the module or give a percentage towards the completion of the module, um, it was important that they were involved and um, we had that workshop to discuss anything. Um, the academic integrity time is another idea that we had that we would uh, insert into any lecturer's module in Moodle and it would link directly into our content. So students would log in to uh, any particular program that they were studying and open their Moodle page. And it, within that Moodle page, they had a direct link into academic integrity. So a lecturer could point to it at any stage and emphasize that maybe this was a piece of work that they needed to complete and add any information into that tile. So this gave ownership to the lecturer of um, any specific information and it also linked directly so that navigation was happening happening seamlessly from their Moodle page into the content and it also added value to what we had so now we had lecturers pointing to it and, and also spreading the word as such so they were they were also helping us in, in um, populating the page with students and getting students engaging with it so it also uh, gave students time and merge for completion. So now lecturers were on board and, and they were also giving time to the students to complete it. So not only during induction or any event that we may hold um, that may give students some time, uh, 
crucially, uh, due to pressures uh, of assignments and other things going on during the year, um, it's, it's a real advantage to have lecturers give that time to students to complete the academic integrity content. Um, it gave lecturers the resources to use straight away. So even at the very start of the year, before any assignments take place, the lecturers could point to the material and then uh, give the students time to do it while maybe they devised other assignments or um, at least they knew that the students had an understanding before they begin uh, completing any uh, formal handouts um, that they had a good understanding of academic integrity. So it put the content into practical use really is what I'm saying here for later assignments that, that lecturers may set. And it, gave lect it gives lectures up to date and easy to use reporting methods. So there's no ownership on the lecturer to uh, compile reports. In fact, all they have to do is click on that progress bar that I showed you earlier, and they can see a full report of their group of students. And they can see all their um, own students and their own progress. But this also opened up discussion um, so by integrating it into modules, um, scenarios and pr the practicalities around academic integrity and possible breaches could come to the fore. So I'll just move on to the next slide. So this is what the reporting system looks like. So by integrating our content into Moodle, we're able to see how many badges are awarded. Um, we've awarded 500, over 500 badges already since September. Um, our progress bar, it's a little example here, how we can filter progress, uh, how we can see gaps. So where, where we see red blocks is where students haven't completed particular tasks. So this will also help with feedback, knowing what material is underused or not being used. Um, so we can continuously improve so we'll have opportunities to go back, look at these reports and revise uh, maybe even where we place content, uh, maybe how we display it. So loads to learn from this type of reporting, plenty of feedback. Um, and also we can see here that the overview of students is what the lecturer can see in terms of all their students. So I'll just move on to the next slide. And this is an example of how we integrated the material into a module. So the Department of Health and Nutritional Science, uh, a lecturer there approached us and asked us if uh, we wouldn't mind adding a tie to her page, which we've done. And um, she has actually integrated two resources, academic writing uh, and also uh, academic integrity. So she felt that even though her module is health and nutritional science, because there's a lot of reporting, uh, report, report writing, and um, a lot of hand ups and continual assessments that need to be structured, that there were resources at IT Sligo that were sitting alone, but need to be integrated. And in the same way, and academic integrity has been integrated into her module. So we can see an example of it here. And then finally, we'll move on to the next slide. And that is all about continuous improvement. So in summary, we want to use the reporting that Moodle gives us to check activity and interaction. We're hoping that uh, we will have more focused discussion. So once we start looking at those reports, um, we will know what we need to focus on and also more opportunities perhaps for discussion with staff, more workshops. Um, we will use more modules of study. So we want more interaction with lecturers and hopefully that they will add the time to the module. Um, we want more promotion and events and activities. So um, the induction is one opportunity, but we felt there was an awful lot of material within induction week. So maybe academic integrity needs to sit out on its own as a unique event um, and also feedback from students. So we need to start discussing more with students, looking at what the discussions are within our forum um, and also in discussions with staff. We know that we will continuously improve what we have 
um, if, if we continue to take feedback from our staff and students. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gavin and Jennifer, for a really stimulating and interesting uh, presentation. Um, we've got